Obstruction of justice, blackmail, defamation, possession of weapons. Manslaughter too, yeah? And you seem to be enjoying every second of it. Firstly, shameless self-plug. If you want to save 10% on any of your eShop games, use the code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg and you get instantly delivered eShop vouchers to the US or EU regions and it's actually legit and endorsed by Nintendo. It has been a very busy day here at Switch Up Towers and I am delighted to bring you a performance review of Persona 5 Royale. It's not a series that I've played a huge amount of, but I do know they moved away from the old engine used for Catherine and created a proprietary one for Persona 5 Royale, which usually means they have more more control over every aspect and in turn are able to get much more performance out of their own engine. We'll look at all the usual things, frame rates, visual quality, in-game resolution in both docked and handheld, load times, download sizes and everything in between. And as this is my first time playing Persona 5 Royale, you can have a little chuckle at my naive early thoughts at the end of this video. And a thanks to the publishers for the review copy. My name's Mark Walker, welcome back to Switch Up. Is the Switch an uncomfortable palace for Persona 5, or is this one no joker? Well, let's find out. Persona 5 on Switch is going to set you back £54.99 or $59.99. If you're here in the UK, that is quite an eye-watering price and it clocks in at 14.1 gigs. Now that being said, you're looking at over 100 hours of gameplay, but we don't care about any of that. If you're a fan, you're more than likely already pre-ordered or are ready to put down the cash if the port's up to scratch. And I found myself playing a new game, one that I very rarely get to play on the Nintendo Switch, and I call it, can I get the game to drop a single frame? And I've got to be honest, with you, I think the answer might actually be no. Not only is the frame rate locked out at 30 frames per second, this persists when there's any amount of action on the screen, it persists when there's dynamic cutscenes, it persists when there are rain effects outside, and it even persisted when I aimlessly spun the camera, trying to force some kind of issue. Unlike some of the miracle ports, Persona 5 Royale isn't a particularly taxing game, but there's still enough going on that it could cause some issues at at least at some points. It's not just the frame rate that's important though. I alluded to it there and I was talking about dropped frames as really what I wanted to see is how the frame pacing held up. It's that that can make 30 frames per second feel like an incredibly smooth experience or like a jittery nightmare. And frame pacing is completely in sync. The gap between each frame rendered to the screen is nigh on perfection. It makes for a very pleasant playing experience. And as I say, this is maintained during heavy action or when transitioning from battle back into the main game. Really impressive stuff. An interesting topic is the in-game resolution. While I've not had the time to literally pixel count, which is essentially what you have to do, I can see what they have done. The in-game resolution is not native. I'd say we're looking at maybe it could be as high as 900p, but it's more likely 720p in docked, and then just sub that in handheld. But cleverly, and we've seen it done before, they've rendered all of the overlays in full native resolution. So in docked mode, the overlays, all of the artworks, the text boxes, that looks to be rendered at 1080p, and in handheld 720p. It's a nice illusion because very often you'll be reading those or paying attention to those, and it gives the image a real crispness. It's only when you cast your eye to the background or to the 3D models where you'll notice the slight drop. The models themselves have carried over nicely. The new engine was bought in place in part because the dev team wanted to have more freedom over the overall visual and aesthetic look. They created a proprietary cell shaded design and there is a sharpness between the character models and the background environments. They are for sure the most important aspect, but the contrast is quite stark at times and it shows up the age and perhaps down sampling of some of the textures in certain areas. While excellent, the port isn't perfect. You will notice some assets will stream in after the camera's loaded, meaning that pedestrians or objects within the world will suddenly appear. It really isn't a major issue but it's noticeable. Then there are a few graphical anomalies in the shadowing. They're few and far between, and honestly, there's a chance they could have been there in the original Persona 5. You'd have to let me know. What we won't know until the Wizards at Digital Foundry get their hands on this is if the game's using any sort of dynamic resolution scaling. As I say, for me, the character models look sharper than the rest of the world, but that could just be an illusory thing based on their slightly different design. Persona 5's art direction shows no signs of age, with contrasting colors, sometimes eye-watering levels of saturation that's offset to a very cool graphic style all of its own. 
All of this is accompanied by one of the best soundtracks I've heard in a long time, and audio fidelity seems to be exceptionally good. It's been a while. And I'll act like the troublemaker I am. Let's do this, Captain Kid. Of course, you'll be able to choose either English or Japanese voice actors, and I'm not gonna lie, I was feeling a little lazy today and simply couldn't be bothered to read, so I opted for the English dub. I know, I know, I've infuriated the purists, but it is what it is, and the English dub here is actually not bad at all. If they didn't take some inspiration from Jesse Pinkman, well, I don't believe it. Now, in-game load times are another area that's very impressive. With an average load time of 4.2 seconds, I didn't find a single one that was longer than 6. Plus the fact that most loading is disguised with a cross-transition that's generally fitting to the environment and uses some parallax scrolling. By the time the game's loaded, you simply had a few seconds to wonder why every game didn't try and make its loading screens look this good. Finally on visuals then, we have the shadow maps. Now this isn't the most exciting or thrilling area, Area, but it's always pleasing to see high resolution character shadows. It's overall a really good port and I just don't think you're going to be disappointed at all. Last but not least, quickly, what is included in the package? Well, obviously the full game, but also over 40 different items of previously released downloadable content. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, over the original Persona 5, you had entirely new areas that you could walk around and even new shops that you could visit. Either way, if like myself, you are new to this game, it seems to be a very, very good way to play it. And so then I'll share with you my impressions after the first four hours of the game, which is nothing, a mere drop in the ocean. And I'll say, with these types of experiences where you know how much hype is based around the game and how we hear the word masterpiece thrown about all over the place, from these initial very early impressions, there isn't a single aspect of the experience that feels forced or that doesn't feel completely fitting and by design. Everything from the graphic style to the voice acting, down to the way the action works. So far it's so incredibly impressive and I'm having a blast. I do hope it continues and just like Xenoblade, the latest one Xenoblade 3, I refuse to rush through it. You won't be getting a full review of this one I'm afraid. And look, there are hundreds of those out there. This is all about the performance. And I'm going to sit and really enjoy this one in handheld. If you like the Joy-Cons that you saw in this video, we should have an updated link in the description so you can save a bit of money on those. If it's not there today, it'll be there tomorrow. But thanks to all of you that enjoy the content. I hope this is useful if you were thinking about picking up the game. And now I am going to go back and join the Phantom Thieves who are in the early stages of rehabilitation, apparently. A thanks to our Patreons and to our new members. I think we have five of you. If you want to join the, the channel, you can click that join button somewhere, but do tickle all the other buttons because the algorithm apparently loves it. And as always, for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!